Hello, and welcome to another sound design tutorial with Sky River Sound. My name is James Thatcher, and today we'll be doing things a little bit differently. Today, the focus will not be so much on sound design as it is workflow. I've had a few people asking me about what my workflow is like going between Reaper, Wise, and Unity. So I thought I would go ahead and do a tutorial showing how I work between those. What I've got right now is I took a video that I exported from a uh, micro game that's available in the Unity store and just exported some videos of me playing the game and then I've redone all the sounds for those. So I went through, marked where all the events were happening, which is why the screen looks like such a mess, and lined up the different events to make the sounds. So you can see what I've done here. I died. Okay, so the way that I'm doing this now is you notice that I've got the region manager open. And the way that I get things ready to export is I'm going to use the region render matrix, and that requires me to first set up my regions. And when you do this right, this is a big part of why I use Reaper. It makes exporting so much less of a hassle. So I go in and let's look at the lasers that the turret is firing. So I go through and I select each fire event or each item that's being used as part of this laser fire. So just fire number one. And looks like I've got them. Now that I've got them selected, I've got a key combination that I have set to the action insert region from selected items in the action list. So now that I've got my items selected, I use this combination, which for me is command shift R. That's just what made sense to me. And now once I've got it selected, this is a very important part to keep things organized. I go in, I name the region, and I assign it the same color as the tracks. So here I'm going to call it turret laser one, and I'm going to make it pink. And I'm going to do the same thing for the others. So here's two, select these. I'm holding down command to select these. It would be control on a PC. Okay, looks like I've got it selected. Make another region. We'll call it turret laser two. Color it pink. And you see what I'm doing? I'm going to do this for all of the sounds that are in this video so that I can export them all in one go. So I'll be back with you. I don't think you need to watch me as I do this for all 10 of them. So I'll be back once I've got everything set up for the project and I'll show you how I use the region render matrix. Okay, and we're back. So you can see I've set up my regions here in the region manager to get all the variations of the laser hitting, the laser firing, the alarm that the turret makes, its movement, and when the turret explodes and when it hits the wall and when the character drops dead. So I'm now going to go over to the region render matrix and this really is where your signal routing will become very important because you need to make sure that all of your regions you can select a bus that will contain all of the sounds that you need to render for that specific region. So what you then do is I want the turret movement regions to render through the turret movement bus. Now this is why naming and coloring is so important is because it makes this much faster than having to search through bus one, bus two, bus three. So I then go through turret alarm. I render through the turret alarm bus. And same thing for the lasers. So the lasers, I render all of these tracks that are here, all go up through the turret laser bus. So for all of the ones saying turret laser, I can take each of these regions and tell it to render through the turret laser bus. Same thing with the turret hits. I've got it separated into body hits and wall hits. So I'm going to use those buses here, body hits and wall hits up here turret explode right there dropping dead right there so i should have everything that i need to render for this project i've already rendered the weapons so i'm not going to do that again 
And at that point, I can then just click render. I go in and change it to region render matrix. And for this one, I think we can keep it with all project regions because I've only got regions that I actually want to render this time. And another important thing that makes Reaper awesome is the wild cards. I can set it so that it names it based on the region name so that the named file will be based on the region name. So I don't have to go in and individually name all of these exported files. After that, I just have to decide my format and the other things that I'm doing there, define the file path, what I usually like to do here is I go in and there you can see that I've got a rendered media folder that I create so that it stays separate from the rest of the project files. And after that, I just click render. I do a quick check to make sure I've got everything selected the way I want it. And you can watch, it renders all of these through the buses that I selected in the region render matrix. And there we have it, 23 files rendered just like that. So from here, what I do is because I have WISE set up on a Windows-based machine, just because I think WISE runs quite a bit better on Windows versus when I've tried to run it on my Mac. So I'm going to be switching over to the Windows machine. I'm going to send all of these files into a shared folder between the two computers and import them into WISE. And I will resume the tutorial from there and show you what I'm doing in WISE. Okay, and so now we've got everything exported from Reaper. I'm on my other computer. I've got things loaded into WISE. And now this part is going to vary depending on what project you're working on, what sound you need to play, when you need it to play. I can't cover everything, and I'm not going to say this is the ideal or the best way to do it. This is just how I've been getting it to work for me. So what I've then done is I created a random container within an actor mixer for all of the turret laser sounds. So within WISE, if we go in here, I can then push play on the transport. And it plays the laser sound. I've got it to where it will avoid repeating the last three lasers played. And if I want to, I can even go in and add some variation in pitch to create more variety. Let's enable it, have the minimum offset. We just want a little bit and the max offset. There we go. Let's save this. Then once I've got it there, I then right clicked it, said new event, play. I've already done this. I can go in and see this in my events, I have play turret laser. I then hit F7 to go into my sound bank manager, drag play turret laser onto weapons. So now play turret laser is part of the weapon sound bank. And then what I need to do is generate all. It generated just fine. I then save it. If you don't save your wise project before going back into Unity, your new events that you've created won't show up for selection in your WISE picker. So I go into Unity and I find the weapon controller script for the turret. And again, this is going to vary greatly depending on what you're working on. This is just what worked for this project. I then have gone into the script weapon controller here. I opened it in Visual Studio and added just a couple things to get this to work. So I go in up here in order to make it so that I can just drag an event or select an event from my wise picker in the Unity UI instead of having to hard write it into code each time and make sure that I'm spelling the event name right and using all the right syntax. I put in public akwise.event sound event and that tells me that it will be available within the UI of Unity. I then go down to the spot where it is telling the game when to play the sound. I commented out the old sound that was using Unity's built-in engine and put in sound event dot post game object. And that tells it that it will use a sound event from Wise 
attached to this game object, and it will post that event to Wise so that Wise then knows what to do with it. I then was able to just select from my Wise sound events here in a list, rather than again having to write it all out and make sure everything is spelled right with the correct syntax myself. Selected play turret laser, and when we then go into the game to make sure it works, now the turret's at the end of this, but it won't take too long. We can just grab our shotgun. And let's see if we can hear the turret's lasers. And there we have it. We got the turret's lasers working. It's pretty much a repeat the same process there. Again, it really varies depending on what you want to do, but this hopefully should show you how I'm able to work from grabbing the sounds from Reaper that I've made and putting them into WISE and implementing them through WISE into Unity. I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you want to see similar things about workflow or about implementation in the future. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you all next week.